Welcome to Cinema 5D on the Couch, the talk show with filmmakers and industry leaders. Brought to you by G Technology, Rode Microphones, Movidium, Film Convert, and FNV. Welcome to another episode of Cinema 5D on the Couch. Thanks to our sponsors, Qi Technology, Rode Microphones, Movidium.com, Film Convert, and FNV. We are happy to um, have another round of guests, and this time it is FNV. Yeah. This Welcome. Is, <laughs> hi. This is Connor Hardnett and Mark Voss from FNV. Connor, you are also a filmmaker, so you, I invited you. We invited you and. In the, as a filmmaker, as much as uh, somebody who works for F and V, so sure. let's talk a little bit about lighting in general. How do you think lighting has changed for us filmmakers? You know, over the past ten years or so, um, since we have smaller cameras, more light-sensitive cameras, and also lights that are more portable. Sure. Um, in general, for me, I think it's the portability has become the uh, the biggest game changer for me because the lights are a lot more efficient. And I think that also goes hand in hand with the color temperature you can achieve with lights. So uh, with working in, uh, with F and V, I've become spoiled. I can take a lot of lights out uh, on shoots. And uh, the the biggest factor that has changed the way I light is it are those two things. It's the portability, being able to run it off of batteries. So either a last minute um, decision for a little bit of fill or a, a kicker or um, being out on location, I can throw a battery on and uh, depending on how intense I have the brightness, uh, I could run anywhere from three to five hours off of a panel light. And also another thing is having a, a daylight balance source on location is huge. Before you had to have fluorescence or an HMI and that required two things, you know, heavy equipment, ballasts, um, as well as you need a, a power source. So. Um, before, if I wanted to generate sunlight um, and lots of it, I was probably renting an HMI, uh, plugging it into a generator if we didn't have enough uh, of power via a circuit, and uh, that creates a lot of noise. HMIs, for the most part, I've had great experience, but you can experience flicker issues, and it's just a little cumbersome. But uh, LED lights, I can bring them closer to the subject because they're not generating any noise inside the set. Um, and yeah, they're just, uh, it's been a pleasure to work with them. And uh, probably for almost a year, I was using just LED lights. And most recently, I had to shoot some stuff on um, high frame rate. And so I had to go back to uh, uh, some tungstens, but um, that was the only way I could achieve the lights. So, you know, I anticipate that LED technology is only going to improve in its uh, intensity uh, as we find new ways to cool the light and maybe some new technologies um, in the in the LEDs themselves. Uh, but until then, I, f I find myself on most shoots using LEDs, but uh, when I need a lot of light, I still am going back to either an HMI um, or, uh, or a tungsten light, but mostly HMIs. Yeah. Do you find that uh, the whole, you know, with cameras getting more light sensitive, I think it, when we started out with LEDs, many people complained that they are not strong enough. Now they're sure. getting stronger. I mean, you should know certainly a lot about this. I mean, you guys, you have a lot of lights that are quite strong uh, mm -hmm. for LEDs. And uh, also cameras get more light sensitive, so it kind of comes together. You don't need as much light yeah, as you right. used to. And also you have stronger lights, stronger LEDs uh, than we used to have, right? Yeah. I think the intensity issue is getting less and less an issue because, as you said, the sensitivity is increasing. Um, I think the main issue nowadays is really the color quality and um, even with this, uh, LEDs have come a long way already. So I think it's now at a level that is at least on the same level or sometimes even better than other technologies or traditional lighting um, technologies. But um, yeah, there's a problem to how really find out what is um, a good color quality LED light. And um, our, our research has been concentrating on this to make the LED lights really color accurate. Um, for sure in different kinds of levels because we have different kinds of customers and also um, different kinds of budgets, but this has been one of the main goals. But we, you, we talked about this another time before that you said that the CRI is just one measurement, right, for, for, for light quality. Yeah. Why, why everybody is freaking out about CRI and now even very, very, very cheap manufacturers claim that they have a very high CRI. How do you see yeah. this? So the CRI is for sure one measurement and it measures actually eight values, eight color values. 
and um, it gives you a little bit insight of um, how the light can um, render those colors but um, those are not really representing the full spectrum that you normally shoot um, for example skin tones and reddish tones they are not really re well represented in this um, eight colors so it only gives you a first hint what could be um, the direction of the light but still some lights that can have a very high CI of 95 let's say um, can still produce not uh, a nice spectrum and a nice um, resulting image so um, in my opinion the, the most thing is you should trust your eyes so you should either um, judge the light how you see it or you should um, shoot something and then judge the final result the image that you shoot with your camera the other thing is um, with depending on what kind of level of LEDs is um, the different sensors of the camera see the light in different ways so a CMOS sensor um, sees the light um, often much different than a CCD sensor and even from the same type of sensor technology from manufacturer to manufacturer you get very different results sometimes the higher the um, specification of the LED lights is the more closer the different camera types get but still this is something that the specification the CRI for example or other um, type of numbers can't tell you as a user so the best thing is really to try and test and see um, what you get with your camera. Mm. So you guys have innovated a lot in the whole field of LEDs over the past few years. Wha what new products do you do you have? Yeah, so we, we started basically in the budget range and we always concentrated on making the, the color quality well, or a good light basically. Um, and um, we improved this step by step because um, LED technology also improved a lot and we were able to also in in improve our um, LED l LEDs basically. So um, the, the basic color rendering got better and better. This also was reflected somehow in the CRI, but it was for the whole spectrum. So we represented um, colors like skin tones and reddish tones also very well. And now we basically have three lines, which is the uh, basic K4000 line that we also introduced initially. Then the plus series, which is a CRI of 90 plus, so more than 90. And the ultra color series, which is 95 CRI plus minus 0 0.6. So it's in a very specific range. And um, this is really th basically the maximum that you can more or less get with LED technology regarding color reproduction at this moment. Okay. Do you see, I mean, what I'm still missing from the whole LED uh, lights, I mean, very, very bright lights, basically. You mentioned that you still have to use for high speed uh, because you need a lot of light, the mm -hmm. HMIs. Do you think that in any kind of future there will be an LED light bright enough to replace something like an HMI? I'm sure. I mean, sure. the whole technology of LEDs evolved so fast or so dramatically in the last couple of years. If you check back what was the quality and also the light output some years ago, and if you then check what is available today, then you can imagine how the technology can change in the next coming years. So I'm pretty confident that we will get some yeah, similar light output also like traditional light sources. Yeah. Do you find you find, I, I personally sometimes miss hard lights from LEDs. Sure. And uh, I guess that's a, a consideration to uh, take into account. Uh, one common structure for LED lights are panels, um, and those are good for uh, wide beams, and uh, it's best if you can diffuse it so that depending, it always depends on what you're shooting, uh, but if you're close to a background, you'd want to diffuse it so that you could eliminate any potential to have multiple shadows, uh, just the nature of the light. Um, so there are certain uh, instances where you you do have to bring on uh, uh, single source lights and a higher intensity. And it, as mentioned, those are kind of when I fall back onto the, um, the tungsten or the HMI lights primarily. Um, but I think with the advancements or the hope of advancements in these um, larger sized LEDs, it, you know, we'll be able to shape them. And, uh, and I think that for me in the LEDs is the next thing I want to see. So the light characteristic of, I mean, I honestly still, if I have the choice, and I, I prefer a Kino flow mm -hmm. to an LED because it's wider. I mean, it, it has a, a longer throw and it looks somehow more organic. I think LEDs are probably getting there, but you think they will ever replace something like that, like the, p the bulbs out of a, of a Kino flow or... Yeah, sure. I think it's the way you almost diffuse it. I mean, the Kinoflow in, by nature is a, a tube, and it's got just a very wide beam, a very soft beam, and there are larger strips of light. Um, so a larger source helps create a softer source, and when you look at a panel of an LED, it's constructed of, uh, you know, 
hundreds of little lights and each light wants to is a hard light and wants to make its own shadow um, but you know say for our products we've introduced specific diffusion methods um, so we have these filters called a milk filter that really helps um, diffuse the pan diffuse LEDs so that the light instead doesn't become a source of many LEDs but rather becomes a glowing panel and with this we've seen just tremendous results in the way that it can uh, uh, wrap around faces because we make a bigger s source as well as just the quality of the light how it is kind of absorbed into the nooks and crannies yeah i think the main thing is really how to shape the light and how to to make it um, diffuse and KinoFlow does nothing different so also they with their um, led lights which are very good so um, they also have a strong diffuser on the front and this really changes the way how the leds shine then so and with our lights, it's a similar thing. So we have a strong diffuser, which for sure takes away some of the brightness. But on the other hand, it makes a very um, soft light and a really nice light. Also a light that is more easy to look into than a hard source. So is the color spectrum that the LED has s comparable to, you know, like an HMI or something like that? Yeah, so the spectrum in general um, is not continuous in LED lighting. So it's um, different than other light sources but um, it's getting better and better. So it's getting more complete and without um, really big um, yeah, regions yeah, yeah. where something is missing. So in the past, many LED lights and still of many manufacturers LED lights, they really have problems in, in some regions like um, reddish color colors, for example. And this again, uh, as we talked about CI already, this is not represented in the CI. But um, when you check some of the high quality LED lights, then you can see that the resulting image is really um, showing the complete spectrum so you don't see any deficits in, in the resulting image and in the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching this segment of Cinema 5D on the couch. Uh, if you want to hear more from Connor and Mark from F&V, please tune in for the next segment of this show. And also thanks to our dear sponsors. That's G Technology, Rode Microphone, Movidium.com, Film Convert and F&V. Thanks for watching. <laughs>